my sleepless soul to tonight. Mariah Carey. Mm -hmm. Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. Prophet Brian Carm made a video, I believe it was actually two weeks ago. I thought it was today. Um, I saw it today, but it was apparently from a couple of weeks ago. And he spoke on some things that the Lord has shown him. And I'm wondering if maybe I actually posted that already or watched some of it already and don't remember or ignored it and decided not to watch it. But I saw it tonight. And um, I asked for prayers for Will Smith. And then I wake up and realize that the Oscars had been on and apparently there was some sort of issue with the Oscars. But the issues that I'm seeing coming for him is not that. And so I'm asking you to pray. And of course, I have a list of people, Britney Spears, JoJo, um, Lindsay Lohan. Where is Lindsay? Um, Kanye is still going through some things in his mind. And the, 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 the divorce happened. And those are things that Brian God had been shown. And, I, and it was a confirmation. Again, for me, I mean, I had been back then saying, okay, pray for Kanye. I was excited when he got saved. And people have had a lot of things to say. And, you know, again, you're talking about heavy witchcraft and all kinds of mental issues and things like that. So I'm still praying that the Lord just will uh, finish the work that he's begun in him. And people are oh, he's not really saved. Uh, all I know is the Lord told me to pray for him. And I was for years, periodically, I would just, every time it came in my mind, I would pray for him. So I was excited when he got saved. Like I said, some of y'all are just haters and you mad. You don't want him to be saved anyway. Um... Hot Teddy Yaba. So yes, Kanye, Kim. I mean, we all need prayer. Of re and my prayer is for that we all repent and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, so that we do not die and go to hell. But there are certain people that He puts on my heart, and so Lindsay Lohan, Kanye West, those people. Lately, it's been JoJo. Um, of course, Brittany. Lord God, mm -hmm. I talked about that already. And this new boyfriend, she's making the same mistakes all over again. Help her, Holy Spirit. Um, <laughs> I'm laughing because somebody had put, she had did this run. I felt like the run was kind of off, but on, but with, and they put it to like a gospel track or something. It was kind of nice. You know, I said, this is interesting. But that's because, you know, the gifts and callings are without repentance. And a lot of people are doing things that they want to do, but it's not what God called them to do. And so, um, the main person I'm thinking of right now is Mariah Carey. Whom Prophet, Prophet Brian Khan also mentioned in the video that she needs prayer and that he sees a situation similar to what happens to um, Whitney Houston. Now, I believe that she's with the Lord because of the vision the Lord gave me when she passed and what it is he told me when she passed. And I left a lot of that alone and I let the people online do their whole conspiracy thing. But at the end of the day, I didn't want to get into it. But yes, the Holy Spirit told me. Don't listen to the news because they're lying. That what, that what they say about her will be a lie. <sighs> oh my God, have mercy, Jesus. And I begin to understand, or oh, he's saying that, you know, they killed her. Oh my God. So, um, and I have been asking for people to pray for Mariah Curry, but it's just, I think what happened then is the same thing that happens tonight. And I don't want to make the same mistake because people immediately, like within 24 hours or a couple of days, Mariah Carey was in the hospital. And people was like, oh my God, I remember, but she's okay. And I was thinking, thank God. I, and I went online saying, see, y'all think it's a joke. I'm telling you, when I say pray, I need you to pray. And so I really thought, oh, well, that's done. She's good. She's okay. And tonight when I was thinking about Will Smith, she popped in my mind and I didn't realize that, okay, she's popping in your mind, Jerome. Because the Holy Spirit is trying to show you that don't, don't, you're, you're about to do, don't do the same thing you did with Mariah. First of all, when it comes to the Will Smith situation, I, it was that what they saw in the Oscars was, I'm like, oh no, that's not what I see. Ta, bow, yo, that's not what I see. And I'm telling y'all to pray. And, um, ma, 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 ba, she, ka, tu, sh, kam, ba, 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 se, ke, te. Ta ba ba ba. The last time I spoke on this, I got extreme chest pain. They didn't like that. Rebuke the enemy in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray for me, for my safety, for my, <laughs> for grace and for mercy and for favor and for just help and for <laughs> just keep me in prayer in Jesus' name, repentance and all of that. 
in Christ Jesus' name, because, um, yeah, like I said, I still feel like there's something going on that he knows, and he's, like, sacrificing himself to save his children. It's kind of what I feel, and I'm not sure, but if it's not that, I still feel like it's a death situation. But I feel like it's because the anxiety and the depression and the fear that I've been seeing in him and on him. So I feel like, okay, I feel like it's death, but, why? but I also feel like he knows it's coming. So how does he know it's coming? Is it because of rituals? Is it because of he's trying to save somebody else? And is it because of why? And it's like, okay. And just now he was seeming like he was being trying to be more humble and more broken. And I say, well, that's a good thing because God is near to those who are humble and contrite and broken in spirit. But then you get on the Oscars and slap somebody. And I'm thinking, okay, well, but then that was, I believe, people, I believe it was staged. It, when I look at the images, I'm like, oh, this, he's smirking. I'm looking at facial expressions. This this is fake. And so a couple of people, a couple of people have also said the same thing. Only two people on my friends list on Facebook have said the same thing. And so I believe it was fake and staged. And that has nothing to do with what it is I'm seeing. And so I guess that's why when. I was, that was all on my mind. Just how I just, as I'm running through all of that real fast, see how I'm talking? My mind go like that. And so as all that's going, something else comes in another thought and flies in and goes cross, as my mother say, goes cross my mind. And I'm like, oh yeah, Mariah Carey, I remember that. We had to pray for her too. And I brushed that off as, oh yeah, I remember that. We had to pray for her too. And really the Holy Spirit is saying, okay, no, just like you saying that what you see it's not what they talking about in regards to Will Smith. And just like you warning them, <laughs> don't think that you saw my post and think that, okay, yeah, that's what God was showing Jerome. No. I'm also now showing you, Jerome, that just like, okay, no, what they're talking about is not what I'm showing you. I'm also trying to let you know that what I told you, what they told you about Mariah Carey when she got in the hospital the last time is not what I'm showing you. Katsuru Abba. I saw how she was when Whitney was gone. Mariah had nothing to say to nobody. Mariah wasn't trying to talk to nobody. Oh my God. I feel like I can just feel her spirit. Jesus, she, oh Lord have mercy, God. She was heartbroken. And she knew what happened. She knows, she knows the type of things that happen. And was smart enough not to speak on it, but at the same time, it's like mm, she wanted to for her friend be like, okay, y'all keep saying it's conspiracy theory. Let me let y'all know what's really going on. But see, Mariah liked the money. <laughs> she liked the diamonds, honey. She likes the champagne. She likes to live the lavish life. And But then all of that's the act. She's putting on her Marilyn Monroe routine and giving you, yes, darlings. I'm like, girl, and I love it, but let's be real, Mariah. Let's be real. But when you feel like there's no way out. Ha, ba, 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 ba. So when her husband starts talking about the fact that we are Israel. Tribe of Gad. Checking in right here. The Gadang Bay. Gadang Bay. The God people of Ghana. I'm checking in. Yes, we are related to the Igbo of Nigeria. The Lemba of Zimbabwe, the Falasha, a.k.a. Beta Israel of Ethiopia, the Bantu in Congo. I'm checking in for my people. We are Israel. Amen. I'm talking about my specific bloodline. It may not apply to all black people, but I'm talking about me. Tribe of Judah, tribe of Gad checking in. Descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Worship per of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. My bloodline ancestors. Shiki Yaban Soto. In Jesus' name. So when her husband spoke on it, that got a little bit dangerous. And I feel like Mariah was like, don't do that. Because my kids, our kids, don't do that. And so he quieted it down real quick. But what you got to understand is from what I remember looking up, her baby daddy, her ex-husband, they should have never got... I'm not going to get into that. Um, he was raised by his grandparents who were deacons, if I'm not mistaken. And I believe I see in the spirit Mariah Carey's grandmother because I know people have, she's told this story a hundred times, but I was one of her biggest and first fans. When she, when that's, when her cassette came on sale, I got it. It may have been bootleg, <laughs> but in them days, I mean, I don't know, I, I don't know because I remember it had the, the pamphlet with like the words to the songs in it and I listened to those songs. Well, actually that might've been later. That one might, didn't have, I think the one later I got had the pamphlet, but that one probably didn't have the words 
in it. That might have been a bootleg. I don't know. But I listened to that. It was a cassette tape. I would play it and flip it and play it and flip it and play it and flip it. And my girl, I said, I never heard a white girl sing like this. And my girl said, who's white? I said, did her? I said, see, look. Because my girl was going by her voice. And what it is, she here. Chicago Boche. And I said, here, here, look. And she looked, took one look at Mariah Carey back when no nobody was talking about her ethnicity. When her first CD came out, this was Christmas. You know she loved Christmas. Which is really her way of letting it be known. She loved Christ. <laughs> That's really what it is. And she's like, no, we're going to make his name glorious. But she's trying to do it in like a little roundabout. And it just, she likes the festivity and the family. And it seems like people kind of calm down. It's not as much violence. And people kind of try to chill out at Christmas. And she just likes the energy and the feel. And is she Irish? So you got all of that um, fairies and, 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 and four-leaf clovers and all of that druid witchcraft it's all of that just you know lucky stars and you know that white witchcraft where they make it seem like it's all just fun and festivities and cute it's deception christ jesus help us uh, my grandmother took one little girl said that girl ain't white and then the baby a year later if I, it seems like people start talking about her face and i was shocked i said oh my goodness grandma was correct But I always think about how Mariah says, no, you got to sing it how you feel it. Now, her mother was an opera singer, so she knows a little bit about technique. But she tells you, for real, for real, she believes in it. Sing it how you feel it. And it's called, because that's called the anointing. Because her voice was anointed by God. Even Beyonce said, when she hears, hears Mariah Carey, she hears God. Yes, you do. Because her voice was anointed by God. She was gifted by God. She should be singing for God. Because God is not pleased with the fact that she does not sing music for him because of the fact that she wants money i had that conversation with jesus christ about myself as a kid and the lord ichabod he left his presence left because he was so disturbed by how i did not want to sing christian music he was already disturbed by the fact that he was telling me that my calling was to be a preacher and i say they're gonna say i'm trying to be like my father and i didn't want to be anything like him to be honest at 10 years old, can I be honest? I said, 11 and 12, I said, oh, no. I want my own name. I already got his face. Roni is short for Heronimo. R-O-N-I, short for Heronimo. R-J-E-R-O-N-I-M-O, which is Spanish for Jerome, which is a French word. It's the same name. It has the same meaning. It comes from the same Greek, Heronimus. And my mother wanted me to have my own name. And, and my name should have been Roni. Because I would have been named after him. But at the same time had my own name. And so then there is the compromise. Because the Bible says that the two shall become one. And so there has to be compromise in marriage. But when people don't want to. When they want to be uplifted in pride. And everybody got to have their way. Then that's how marriages fail. Because of immaturity. But in any case. On the eighth day, like the Bible says, separate for seven days, eight days. And then the male child can be brought back amongst his people. And so after eight days and everything according to Jewish law, I was brought home and my uncle came. And basically, the Lord somehow or whatever, <laughs> the name Roni popped into his spirit and he called me that. My mother said I was basically silent. She don't even remember me moving. Even in her stomach, it was like she don't remember having no complications or nothing. It seemed like my personality came when he said Roni. Nobody was there. But my Uncle Lana and my mother. And people don't even know that my uncle Lonnie was there because they thought he, he didn't show up at the hospital. They thought he was somewhere drunk. So he was already upset about that. Me not wanting to be a preacher, even though my father, my grandfather, my great grandfather, and then that, because my concern was okay, how am I as, 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 a, as a human being going to take care of myself? How am I as a man going to provide for a wife and children? This is crazy. And you gave me gifts, and I seen people was making money off of it. And at the time, I had to go to school, and I didn't know if I was going to be a dance major or a voice major. I didn't. I wanted him to tell me which one was going to make me the most money, make me famous, and because I really wanted to be go from one to another. I wanted to do it all to shift from a dance career into music. I would go from dance to Broadway to then back to just in into music. I 
and then and then do more as far as like some directing. You know, I used to want to like do commercials. I always loved commercials, and I wanted to do theme songs for commercials, and I wanted to to um, even maybe do like what they call endorsements. I didn't know that word as a child, but I wanted to do that. I thought my mother could be my manager. I had it all planned out. And the thing is that the things I'm mentioning right now, you can say, well, yeah, that's how the music industry works. But no, boo-boo, I'm talking about the 90s. People was, did not have momagers. There was no Kim Kardashian's mom. This was before Usher's mother. I had these ideas in elementary school. That My mom, because I, you can't trust these people, they steal money. But my mother works for the bank, so she can be my manager. And she's smart and she's pretty. And I know that when she walked through a door, just when people, I noticed how people look at my mother. They become transfixed. By her beauty alone, they are transfixed. And I'm thinking, okay, that's the reason why I don't even pay too much attention to women. It was sort of not attracted to women because I always was seeing the witchcraft in the vanity just from I would see how people spiritually, you are broke down. As soon as my mother walk in, you broke down because you can't even get past how she look. What y'all gonna do when the mermaids and stuff show up? Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. So I said, oh, she'll be my manager. And I'll do this and I'll do this. And I might put a, a gospel song on my record. You know, if, if he's saying to just forget about the dance thing and focus on music. Okay, well, I can, you know do it like this and I'll just use the dance like I'll take dance but I still need to dance classes because I need that for my music videos and you know and I'll do this and I'll do that and I'll put a gospel song here and there things if you've seen that Beyonce and them used to do put this little gospel song and God is not pleased with Fantasia and he's not pleased with Mariah in that respect but her <laughs> the gifts and the callings are without repentance and they was anointed by God. That's why I say, sing it how you feel it. And so I see in the spirit a grandmother. Because like I said, I keep track. And it was the grandfather that was from Venezuela, but it's got like African blood, I think. Because I've seen a cousin on the talk show on the Spanish channel who brought her niece. And I don't know if Mariah Carey came out to meet her or something, but um, it might have been Univision or whatever. It was a little girl. She did look like Mariah. Like if you see pictures of Mariah when she was a little girl, that little girl looked just like Mariah. But she was like the granddaughter of a woman whose cousin had left to go to America. They didn't really hear nothing else about him. And that's her grandfather. Because her mother, her father is not all... He's half Venezuelan and half black. I remember the articles. I remember before Christina Aguilera came out, people was asking Britney Spears or asking this woman about Britney Spears. Do you think anybody else is coming out that we should be on the lookout for? And she said Christina Aguilera. I remember Rihanna was singing in a bar somewhere in Bahamas and said a man, they, they, the story was the man came and seen her sing. He left, came back the next week with another man and she left that night in the middle of the night to go to New York where they had had Jay-Z come, stop doing whatever he was doing to come to the studio in the middle of the night to see her. And that she performed for him. Let me shut my mouth because see y'all see I'm help me Jesus because I'm praying against gossip. But see I read in between lines and I'm minding my business. I'm minding my business and not being a hater and not being a gossiper because the Bible says don't do that. But I remember this, remember the story. <laughs> and he came in the middle of the night and she performed for him, and was got signed on this. <laughs> Signed immediately. And then the next thing I know, Beyonce is talking about ring the alarm because I've been doing this too long. And I, if I see another chick on his arm. See, so I've always read between lines. Before there was a conspiracy theory. Before there was an internet. Before there was a YouTube. Because the gifts and callings are without repentance. And insight, I have it. Foresight, hindsight, because I'm a watchman. My middle name means watcher. Watch, watcher. Watchman. Ira means to watch. It's a person who's a watcher. So, you know, God gave me the name he wanted to have me, but I still feel like, again, <laughs> my name should have been Roni. Because it's related to my father's name, but I'm a different individual, and people should have their own names, like my mother said. And I should definitely have had my grandfather's last name, because you're talking about lineage, you're talking about legacy. And that's always something that's been very important to me. So I remember stories, especially about people's ethnicity and things like that. And I remember that it was the grandmother, who's the black woman who was in Harlem. Who was, but like she said, of course, if you look colored or you look like you black, 
they going to group you with the black people. He may have felt, well, I'm a Hispanic, but in America, in those days, they felt like you look like a black person, so you black. I remember these articles because I've always been into ethnicity and where you're from and language and culture. And it's a reason because God is trying to gather his people because we are scattered. I know people say, oh, he always is talking about him because information is revelation. And I have to give it to you how God gave it to me. And he uses, he deals with me and shows me myself so that I can be purified and also to help me to see things in the world. And so I remember, and so I believe it's that grandmother, talk about a praying grandmother, Mariah Carey's father's mother, that anointing, that Holy Ghost in her voice, you hear it, you hear it. I'll give my all to have. That's not, nobody taught her that. That's not nobody's school. Treating me kind, sweet destiny. That's church all day. Carried me. Oh, that's church all day. Pray to the Lord and he's going to make it happen. Make it happen. Thank you, Lord. Make it happen. You don't hear church? and you, 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 I've seen her on the airplane talking about And they was asking her what she was listening to. And she said, um, the Clark sisters. And they was like, the Clark. She was like, Karen Clark sheared. And the people did not know who she was talking about. I'm a Rob is looking like, okay, you can't sit with me. <laughs> because you don't know Karen Clark sheared. She was like, oh, no. She was like, and she says, you know, she listens to Gospels, I think, every morning or on the planes and stuff like that. So that's so when Brian Kahn speaks on how, you know, you don't know who people, what the, um, who's been praying for them and um, something that he might even say, you know, who's got a praying grandmother or who's. I was like, come on, prophet and prophesy. <laughs> yes, because I, I, you see him, right? You're seeing right, because I've been seeing. I've been seeing. In regards to Mariah, and I'm like, it's that grandmother. <laughs> it's that, that father's mother. Just like the woman who told me, who was a screenwriter, whose brother plays basketball, and her sister-in-law is a famous actress, that they didn't want me around, because I've been blood marked from birth because of my grandmother. Now, see, Mariah went through whatever she went through. She probably would have not been famous if she had stayed living with that grandmother. She would have just either been singing in a church or the devil would have attacked her in all kinds of ways and it would have been a, she would have been having a, probably having a horrible life just like maybe her sister that's on drugs who keeps on trying to use her for money. Help me, Holy Ghost. There I go again. Because of the anointing on her life. <laughs> she said, your grandmother blood mocked you from birth. Yes. She said it's a, Hollywood is a real hellhole. And just like people hear God, there are people who hear demons. I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm just sitting here saying, I'm, I should say, maybe, maybe I'll say her name. Because I can tell you the name of the actress. And you can look her up, her husband and her sister, the husband's sister and all. I could post this on Facebook and tag the pastor of the church that I went to where I spoke to this woman and she got into a car with a friend of mine who's a preacher. I can speak to a family friend who also spoke with somebody who was a child on the show that the actress was on who's married to the basketball player who has a sister who's a screenwriter that told me this. And he can tell you. Well, he won't. <laughs> but he told me. See, that's how people do. They want to hide and be scared, but then they'll, they'll come and tell me. That, oh, yeah, you know, they talk to about the rituals and the sacrifices, but, you know, it's just you can, um, if you say anything about it, you could just easily be discredited. And I'm like, yeah, I can easily be discredited because even if I call you out and say, didn't you tell me this, you ain't going to have the, the nerve to say, oh, yeah, I did tell Jerome that because people that's how people are. But it's fine because God knows I'm telling the truth. So when he speaks about a Whitney Houston type of a situation when it comes to Mariah, all I can say is we have to pray because I thought that Mariah was out of the woods. I thought I was done praying for Mariah. Even though I lately, I can't even say that because no, I lately I was feeling like God is just not pleased with her. And she chased the fame because again, I tell you all that story about 
how it is I looked at my career and stuff because I saw her and I saw other celebrities doing things. I, Lady Gaga, I remember always telling people, when she, fame, she calls herself fame monster. I always, in middle and high school and stuff, I kept saying, listen, people do not understand. Any publicity is good publicity as long as they are talking about you. The problem is when they stop talking. I've been saying that since middle school. I never, I was, people talk about scandals. I, I never cared. I'm thinking, listen, as long as they talking about you and the attention is on you, good. You can turn a scandal. And even even Hillary Clinton said, or, you, or somebody like that, one of these politicians, you never, you never want to waste a good um, ca- ca- catastrophe. Oh my gosh, get that body, get that. But then see, sometimes you got understanding. Sometimes you do things in life, and it's like you don't need attention. You don't want attention. You might you might want to be quiet. You might not. You might want to just keep your head down low. Because some things people don't know. You can get locked up. You can get killed. You know. Help us, Holy Ghost, and protect us in Jesus' name. Suruaba de Gideyamba. So you got to make the right decisions. I've had. I got friends that's pretty famous and. Their fame is rising. Even as they get older, their fame is rising. You know? But it's because they stage themselves. They don't have many friends. I mean, like two. Like me and one other person. And they have associates. And even it's like, okay, I have this one really good friend from this company. And I have this one really good friend from over here. And I have this one little good friend from over here. And then that's it. And then even they are on the like outer circle, and then it's just boop, just me and one other person is a friend, and the rest is fans, and you don't know nothing about them. So then when you you can, <clears throat> people don't even know if their storyline that they're seeing in the newspapers is real because nobody's checking it, nobody's coming against it, nobody's saying, "But wait a minute, I remember him," because even in high school he was very very shady and stated to himself. Well, these people felt like he was shady, and I kept telling those people, "Oh, he's not shady to me; he's shady to you." You got to look a certain way. You got to act a certain way. You got to watch everything you do because reputation. <laughs> I was always a person who was just a little too wild and a little too out there. But I know how to work it. <laughs> and, one, and once you get to a certain level and you got security guards and stuff like that, you ain't got to worry about nothing. And then those people, those people pay people off and they do witchcraft and all kinds of stuff. So even the things that you've done in the past kind of sort of don't catch up with you. You'll be surprised at what money can do. And like I say, these people practice witchcraft. And so then they just get their judgments when they are dead and gone. And then Jesus judges them. And then that's that. But other than that, then you can't really do nothing about it. And Mariah Carey understands all of this. She knows how the industry works. She was married to Tommy Matola. Left down the lane. Y'all know the story. She was singing background for Brenda K. Star. I still believe someday you and me will find ourselves in love again. She was like, girl, you need to be singing for yourself. You don't need to be singing background for me. Come on. She took her to a party. I to listen to her music and stuff. And was like, what are you doing? Because they was kind of friends. And she was backstage listening to her own music. She's like, girl, what you doing singing background for me? <laughs> I like Brenda. I like Brenda K. Star attitude because that's how I am. I, I, I believe in people and I love people. When it, when it comes to talent, I'm looking like, no, this one, I need you to know her. Because, okay, yes, I need, I'm doing my thing. But she need to be, she can do more than me. And then I need you to take her and, yeah, come on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so she took her to a party and, and, and just basically grabbed her and said, like, oh, come on. Like, Tommy Mottola was there. She knew Tommy Mottola was going to be there. She basically, I think she came to her house and was like, girl, no, come on, let's get dressed. And Mariah's just thinking, oh, my God. But but what you're going to do is it's technically your boss. You sing background for her and you're supposed to be your friend. And you ain't doing nothing else. And you figure, well, okay, it ain't nothing else going on. Yeah, exactly. So throw in the little dress, girl. Come on, go. Don't you want to eat? I know you're hungry because, listen, hmm, you in here looking like you broke, girl. Come on, we're going to this party. And you take her to the party and surprise, okay, you didn't say Tommy, Tommy Mottola, the person who runs Sony Music, was going to be here. Yes, this is not from a ride. This is her CD. Woo, woo, woo. I know a ride was probably like, oh, my God, this is so embarrassing. I cannot believe she did this. These songs ain't even ready. Like, I wasn't even, they haven't even been, like, produced. But Brittany knew what she was doing. She's like, that's even better because they haven't been produced. That means you, you ain't under no contract. You don't owe nobody nothing. They they don't gotta they don't gotta do you ain't even got no manager for real, or maybe you do or whatever. But it, that's just as raw talent. People don't even know who you is. Is 
that's even better. He can hear what you can do, and they might produce those songs or do some other songs or whatever the case may be. They don't got to worry about no other record labels. You are a hidden talent, <laughs> raw talent <laughs> that nobody knows about. And so then he went home and paid no attention and just decided to throw it in the limousine. Or at least this is the story that they tell. Because there's nothing else to do. It's like, well, put this on. I guess you don't want to hear the radio. You don't like to hear commercials. I understand that. You get tired of hearing the same songs over and over again on the radio and the commercials and all of that. And, uh, but just put this on. Just something to just background music. But that anointing. That anointing. That anointing and that range and that clarity and that uniqueness that is Mariah. He said, oh, no, turn this limousine back around. She was gone. But he caught up with, got some people to get in touch with Brenda K. Style, and she knew exactly where Mariah was at, and the rest is history. So it was a whirlwind. A little young, pretty girl from New York City. Nice and trim and pretty looking. This is the 90s. You're talking about the supermodel era. She was giving you trim and skinny and long, curly hair, and it's giving you sort of that Cindy Crawford kind of a vibe and singer. Like a black woman, but she's white. So they at least marketed her, and we thought. It was a whirlwind. She was a young girl. Mariah could have been, what, 18, 19? She ain't that much older than me. She was a little girl. Anointed by God. And it's the lights. Action. Hollywood. You got to get it. <laughs> you just got to get it. And so now here we are, and her life is in danger. Because these witches, and these devils, and these people, and the new age, and these people in Hollywood, and all this Satanism, and everything that's going on. And nobody's saying that she's innocent. Because like I said, I have written her off. I, to be honest, I'm saying that I'm surprised because we got to still pray for her. But the truth is, no, Jerome, you know that you, unfri- you unfollowed her on Instagram and wrote Mariah off and said, you know what? Okay, they want the fame and all of that stuff. She chose to do this instead of singing for God. I'm over it. I need to be free from idolatry. So I'm just, and I know she's a person who, from a little kid, I'm talking about 10 years, I played that tape over and over. Oh, Mariah. I played it over and over. So I just basically, and he forgot all about Mariah. But thanks be unto God, the Lord Jesus Christ did not forget about her. And while I was talking about Will Smith, he's saying, I want you to pray for Mariah again, because you should have never stopped praying, because yes, she's in danger. And so, and I didn't even catch that. And then I go to watch Brian Carn, and he's talking about it. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established. So I say that to say this. Pray for Mariah Carey. Jesus is Lord and he's on his way. Get a Bible. Read it and do what it say. God bless you.